Do you like apples? Yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> <laughs> all right uh i uh all i can say is i'm really happy my mom breastfed me um uh, <laughs> the uh <laughs> uh so my talk's a little bit different it's going to be about stories and storytelling um i am curious i can't see any of you so this will be a little bit of a false exercise but maybe I can. How many of you know what movie that's from? And how many people knew that scene or heard that line before or talked about that line? Right? And, and how many people maybe even said that line to somebody one day or <laughs> shared it with somebody at some point? Anyone? Nobody. You guys are all too well raised. Huh? Um, well, I, I show that, A, because it makes me look good, but more... Because I'm out here, and it's funny because I've been listening to all the talks, and I'm not supposed to say I was affected by the talks, and you're supposed to memorize the whole thing. But in listening to all of them, everybody has a point of view of sort of something they're trying to change. And I think for me, I think we're losing our communal storytelling experience. And that thing that we just went through, the fact that you guys have seen it, you've shared it, you may have talked to other people about it, is going away. And I think it matters. And so for me, the reason that I would do things like this and talk about this is try to convince people like you that just like Todd said earlier, we're doing that to ourselves. Te technology is making it, and I'm all for anywhere, anytime, any place. But there are certain experiences and certain stories and certain common ground that I think storytelling can actually affect humans. It can affect you know, sort of your attitude, it can affect your view on the world, you can be educated, you know, I can sit here and take credit for everything right now based on storytelling. But the point is that it takes a, an effort to do it. And I believe it's a communal experience if you go see it together, if you watch it in the same time, if you talk about it. And I'm not saying you have to go to theaters, you can invite people to your house, but I just think people need to do that a little bit more. Um, I also think the second piece is we have to value good storytelling. And I think that for me as a professional storyteller, technology has also put us a little bit behind the eight ball because we've been arrogant for the last 200 years, is that there was a contract with the audience, which was if you get on a stage, if I get to come here, somebody decided that I'm not gonna totally embarrass everybody and be out here on stage and it's worth it. If you go to a movie theater, somebody decided that you should see that movie. Nobody is looking at any of the videos on YouTube. Nobody is looking at any of these short form vines or these things that kids, and I have three little kids, are looking at. And we've lost our ability to have this contract with the audience about what is good, what isn't good, what is, what is amateur and not amateur, what you, know, you should pay for, what maybe you shouldn't pay for. And I really would like to try to convince people that we should start doing that again and in a very conscious effort. And I would give you a couple examples in other consumer product businesses, which is in the car business, and, and sort of there's a colloquial way people say this, which is if you can create a product where people will drive further, pay more, and tell more of their friends about it, that's the business you wanna be in. And I'm sure everybody here has a car that has less dealerships than, the, uh, than Chevy or Ford, and will drive to that dealership to get the car, and will go there because they think it's higher quality, they think it's better, and they understand that when they walk in the BMW dealership, it's gonna be a more expensive than if they went to Ford. And I, I like Fords, I've had a lot of Fords, I'm not against Fords. I think it's the same thing with clothing. You know, you know, you can buy a whole wardrobe out of Kmart, you can also buy a whole wardrobe out of Macy's, and you can even go buy a whole wardrobe out of Barney's. And the point is, as an audience member, and, and a consumer, you know the deal. You expect to go in. You get pissed if you get Kmart quality at Barney's, right? You'd be really upset if you went in to, you know, and got a, a, a two-seater Ford Fiesta when you paid for the BMW sports car. And right now in the media business, we've lost the ability to tell. And that's our fault. The other area is in nutrition and food. 
you have a number of these companies like Whole Foods versus Costco. And it's a very clear relationship on what you've made. So my goal is to try to remind people in a sort of linear logic point of view, which is stories matter. They matter because they're valuable. They matter because we all communicate through stories. And they matter in that they create common ground for everybody, but there also are different kinds of stories. And the only way for the audience to really be part of this contract is to be educated for people who are leaders of corporations to sort of use storytelling and talk about it. And everybody does. I mean, even in this brochure, right, they, they came in and, and the, the, for all the speakers, we got a little thing said, hey, this is the best way to have a good talk. And it literally said, follow the plot of a good detective story. But if I walked in and, you know, said, I'm going to just tell you a detective story, that wouldn't be what's supposed to happen. So storytelling is part of our lives, and technology is making it separate, it's making it alone, it's making it something that we're not sharing with each other. Now, I just want to be very clear, and we're going to show one other tape just to see how large the film audience is in here, um, and I'm going to make another point about what is better. And one time, at band camp, we weren't supposed to have pillow fights, but we had a pillow fight, and it was so much fun. And this one time, we all lost our music, and we were supposed to play this song, but we didn't know it. So we just made it up, and we kept playing and playing, and the conductor didn't know what we were doing, and it was so funny. So you're pissed about something, huh? You know what I do when I'm angry? I just play some Bach on my flute. It's so relaxing. I learned to do that at fan camp. Hold on. Um, you have no idea why I'm angry? Is it because we have a test tomorrow? Sometimes I get cranky when I know I have a big test to study for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. I thought so, because this one time at band camp... W what's your name? Michelle. Okay, Michelle. Um, do you want to be my date for the prom? Really? You seriously want to go with me? Yes, seriously. Are we going to Steve Stifler's party afterwards? Because that would be so cool. Sure. Whatever you want. Cool. We're going to have such a good time. It'll be like this one time at band camp when we all had a campfire. So, uh, I'm obviously the comic relief also. But the, uh, but the point I want to make about American Pie is that I bet if I did the same routine, how many people have seen it, how many people know what it is. Some of you probably saw it. You're not going to raise your hand because you don't want your boss or your friend in here to be like, wow, they watched American Pie. American Pie did not get nominated for nine Academy Awards. It's not a movie. Now we made a ton of money and we made a bunch of other movies. But the reason that that is important to me, and I just want to be clear that I'm not up here arguing that we should only make Oscar winning stories or we should make books that write books that, you know, win the Pulitzer. Stories have value in a lot of different ways. And this movie in my career has had way more positive effect out in the world than Good Will Hunting. I mean, people know it. They're very nice to me. They, you know, they're impressed by it. Some people love it. But it didn't actually have a cultural effect. American Pie actually caused people to talk about sex. It caused them to talk about teenage sex. It caused them to talk about virginity, which hopefully no one in here is still battling with. And <laughs> the point is that the, the, what... What was so powerful about that for me was, was how many parents, and I made that movie before I was a parent, so I had no concept of how hard it is to talk to a 13-year-old. I'm wildly clear of that right now. And the point is that, that I had moms coming up to me and being like, man, that American Pie, I still don't think I would have talked to my son about sex if we hadn't seen the movie. It also created a little bit of common ground for them because the fact that the mom would let the son see the movie created some drama and some, some ability for them to trust each other. And so for me, these things are very important. And it sounds so ridiculous to stand up here and say, you know, you had brain surgeons, literally brain surgeons on stage <laughs> before me, right? And pediatricians and doctors. And I'm not trying to say it's, it's wildly, you know, getting the right medicine from a good doctor and teaching an integrated way probably has a more direct effect on people. But I would say that going to share stories and sharing stories that are well made. And this is my last point, which is about education. I'm here as a guest of Point Park and they've been a great partner of mine with Steeltown uh, in this project, The Chair. 
And part of what we were doing with the chair was to try to educate the audience, to go back to this idea of the contract between the audience and the storytellers, is to say to them, look, you need to know the difference. And I would argue that American Pie stands up as a teenage sex comedy over time because, and we didn't know it at the time because we were all so young, but we actually were pretty good at making movies. And they were people that knew what they were doing. And Paul and Chris Weitz, who directed it, went on to direct a bunch of big movies you've heard of. And actors are all still working <laughs> in stuff that's going on. And we got lucky. But the point was that it was better made and it passed the test of time. And another thing that we can start doing is valuing storytellers. And I don't know what everybody does here for a living and I don't know how it works, but I have found that storytelling is applicable in all of these businesses. And certainly at the education level, we have a lot of programs, and it's a little bit like the previous speaker who was talking about vocation versus you know, academics. There is an actual ability to tell stories well. You can't learn, there is a level of talent that's one level higher where someone might be just super good at it. But, but the point is that the actual art of being able to tell a story is millions of years old, and it's what kept lots of cultures together and lots of things. And I guess my point is, if we don't value it at an educational level, we don't value it as a production level, we don't create this contract with our audience about what to expect from the story, we end up at a lowest common denominator. And I know everybody's gonna think, well, you just showed American Pie. You're way down at the lowest <laughs> common denominator. But again, I will argue for my own movie that it's not. And if you actually watch it, it's, it's not all the way down there. And so that's really what my point today was, is please value storytelling. Please use storytelling in your life. Please enjoy some stories with your friends and with other people and share it. Um, and I'm going to keep trying to build sort of the whole foods of storytelling so that people can find, drive further, pay more, and tell their friends about the stories that I make. Um, <laughs> the last video really is just, I had nothing to do with any of these movies. The editor I was working with, we decided it was just really fun to throw this group of clips together. They're hopefully going to hit movies that motivate you or you remember or you saw. It's, you know, I got two and a half minutes left. It's about a minute long, so that way I don't have to talk anymore. Um, <laughs> But at the very end of it, because I'm not an idiot, that commerce matters. And this isn't some philanthropic pitch that we should all go pick a storyteller and pay for their rent so they can keep telling stories. The idea is it has to be a business. And the last thing after all the movies is a slide of the top 10 movies that have ever come out adjusted for inflation. And there's not one sequel. And there's not one comic book. It's all original stories that people created, and almost 60% of them were created for the movies. They didn't even start somewhere else. So that will be up on the end just to give you an idea that I think it's good for business to be able to tell stories and to experience stories just as much as I think it's good for society. So anyway, enjoy the movies. Captain, my captain. Sit down, Mr. Anderson. You hear me? Sit down. Sit down. I don't have to tell you things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. We know the air is unfit to breathe and our food is unfit to eat. We know things are bad, worse than bad. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. This is it. Don't get scared now. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! I see dead people. Come out to the coast. We'll get together. Have a few laughs. Get away from her, you bitch! We came, we saw, we kicked its ass! I want all of you to get up out of your chairs. I want you to get up right now and go to the window, open it, and stick your head out and yell, I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Thank you. Thank you, Can I ask you a question? I don't know. These guys got to go to break now. 
Shall we ask him a question? Yeah. Okay. Shall we'll ask him only one question? And I know that your knee is hurting because he good. just had he just had knee surgery too. I'm okay. No uh, sympathy. So I was sitting there thinking. All right, you're talking a lot about storytelling and all of that. It's good you got that. How? <laughs> I I I know that that scan of my brain. Despite that scan, That's I right. got that. Were you breastfed? Uh, I was. See. <laughs> You're much better off. <laughs> I was. <laughs> okay, this was not supposed to be a comedy routine. Uh, I don't have a choice. <laughs> that's true. So um, how do you select a screenplay? I mean, you get to select screenplays, right? I do. So what yes. do you look for them in, it, in them? I look for two things. I look for stories that I want to see and like and I think about I'm from a little town in Maryland which is not as cool as Pennsylvania but still Maryland and uh, I think what my high school buddies would say if I made the movie and then I look for characters I want to hang out with you know that's why we had fun making that last clip because I think it's great that those characters all exist in the world and so I would put up you know the guys from American Pie or Will Hunting or you know any of the other characters I've been part of putting them out in the world I think is helpful. Thank you. Last question. Yeah. Why do you like Pittsburgh so much? <laughs> I think you guys got a great city, honestly. I like the people, I like the place. I was saying to your partner, whose name I'm blanking on right this second, who's the other gentleman putting this on. Walt. Walt. Uh -huh. I was saying to Walt that the thing I love about Pittsburgh, and I think Carl, if he's here, he deserves Carl credit, Carl yes. Kurlander, but mm -hmm. the, he's, you know, the, the thing that's amazing about Pittsburgh for me is people aren't afraid to try stuff and they're, they're willing to go out and innovate, they're willing to go out and do stuff. I think part of it's because of the universities you have here, but part of it is because you got a long history of that. There's a lot of people here, you know, and I think to some extent it's a safer environment to go do that. And so I, I find it very encouraging and fun, and the Steelers are better than any other football team that I <laughs> am a fan okay. of. Okay, <laughs> all right. You know, we like him now. We but like I do him like now. Pittsburgh. But thank you, thank you. Thank, thank you for you. having me. Thank you.